as we woke up today we woke up the story of Arsenal submitting a new Rafinha offer and this time round it has not gone direct to Barcelona as they did in the January sorry the January transfer window they've gone ahead to put out an offer <clears throat> to the agent because looks like something is going to be worked out for Rafinha to make his exit out of Barcelona welcome to this channel smash the like button comment and share if you're actually watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily now today is really a Saturday and I think you guys are really enjoying your Saturday and here on to the Brokani Media Football we come with what we call the transfer news show and you know we are already into transfers and you guys are really doing the needful to watch these videos and i think you guys are really having the best of the best of the weekend now <clears throat> we are talking bukayo saka ali ali in in french they call him ali ali other call him al deli you know he was really one of those players that really was part of the invisible team and played with like Thierry Henry. He has gone ahead and really said lots of things about Bukayo Saka and I think you are going to really enjoy his vibe again today because I'm going to bring you all that. And Arsenal had to do a very, a very profit-making contract that saw Bernard Leno sign for Fulham and guess what? They are destined to get money after Fulham found themselves staying into the league. It shows you how this Arsenal side is really making good money as I told you about Pablo Mari over as I told you about Pablo Mari, who found himself in a position of really completing his move to Monza after Monza secured their stay in the Serie A. Now, <clears throat> let's start off with Rafinha. A story is coming in from At Sports that Rafinha is considering leaving Barcelona at the end of the season. The players' agent Deco is managing three offers Arsenal, Chelsea, and Newcastle, all of which offer a higher wage. Barcelona would only sanction a departure if an offer of 70 million euros to 80 is made. That is a sport. Now, one will ask, why is Barcelona trying to sell Rafinha yet? I think Rafinha has gone ahead to have a very good debut season at the team of Barcelona. Barcelona really having financial constraints. That's it. They are really having financial difficulties and they need to go ahead and really offload players. When you look at Rafinha this season, he has gone ahead to play 31 La Liga games. He has gone ahead to score seven, seven goals and put up six assists. In the Champions League, he played five no goal. And in the UEFA Europa League, he played two games and just scored one goal with one assist. So, looks like this season has gone ahead to play 40 games, eight goals and uh, seven assists. That is Rafinha for you. And uh, by the time he left Leeds, he had scored 11 and three assists in 35 games. That is Rafinha for you. So as it stands, it's always important to understand the situation in which Barcelona is in. They wouldn't have loved to let Rafinha go, but they need to offload players to find themselves in a position of really getting in more players, <clears throat> especially strengthening the midfield and seeing themselves in a position of whether they can bring back Lionel Messi because Messi is one of those people, all those players that is up for grabs by Barcelona and I think would give two seasons to Barcelona before he finds himself playing in Saudi Arabia. But if Barcelona don't really clear up all the glitches, all the glitches into their, <clears throat> into their financial stand or their financial books, they are going to find themselves missing out on Messi. So they need to create space for the player known as Lionel Messi early enough. That's why they've put the, play, the likes of Rafinha onto the market. And Rafinha is one of those players that is going to be sold because last summer it was Frankie de Jong and he never really found himself leaving Barcelona because he demanded Barcelona 17 million euros that they couldn't really afford to pay in that particular period of time. Now, <clears throat> when you look at... Uh, Barcelona, Rafinha, and Arsenal. Looks like there is a very huge bond. And if I told you an Arsenal fan, you shouldn't even worry about teams like Newcastle and Chelsea having interest in Barcelona. Sorry, in Rafinha. I tell you that Rafinha said that he loves Arsenal. And if I told you, was, and, and if I told you would return to the Premier League, Arsenal would have been the number one team that would have gone ahead and really play for because they showed love for him. You know, he loves the team, but there came in an offer from a team that wanted him more. And remember, Rafinha had already agreed a deal to go to Barcelona, but there came 
Arsenal coming in with a huge bid that escalated the amount they had agreed Barcelona from 30, was it 35 million euros, to 65 million euros. So that really put the deal to that level and Rafinha found himself going to Barcelona and really putting a pause to the offers coming in from Chelsea and Arsenal because he wanted to really go ahead and play to Barcelona. But unlucky enough, Barcelona are not going to keep him any further this season because he has looked as the liabilities they can really offload from the team to really get what we call financial stability. Barcelona need to get in 178 million euros through sales. <laughs> That's it. And if at all they get in 178 million euros through sales, they should only spend 40% of that amount of money, meaning that out of the 170 million euros, Barcelona can only spend only 70 million euros to buy players. <laughs> That's it. The other will be used for compensations and the violations they've gonna hate to go ahead and really make in the game of football. So I think Chelsea, Newcastle, not a threat. Chelsea itself cannot even come out and really threaten signing a player who wants to play in the Champions League. So they're all out. I think Newcastle can come in, offer more money. Uh, if at all they qualify for the Champions League, then pay even more than 80 million euros to get the player because you look at Miguel Ameron, yeah, he's a player whose consistency is really lacking. I remember at the beginning of the season, he went close to where they 10 games scoring consecutively in each game, but this time round, he has taken very many games without scoring a goal. So I think they would love to have a player like Rafinha, but I think Arsenal is the best fit for Rafinha because Rafinha knows that he can easily outcompete <coughs> Bukayo Saka. And I understand Saka's had a tremendous season. But the way Mikel Arteta is obsessed with this player, it shows you that he can just bring him in and obviously take off Bukayo Saka. You know, with these bad spells of Bukayo Saka having, I think if Ato Rafinha comes in through, he can he can um, capitalize onto that and really dislodge Bukayo Saka. But you can also give Bukayo Saka benefit of doubt that the coming in of Rafinha might raise his career to the next level. And it's so much dependent onto the new deal he's going to sign because... If you're having a computer like Rafinha and you are really you are really chicken hearted, you'll find yourself not putting contract to pen because or pen to paper because you understand how hard it's going to be for your team. Sorry, for you to compete in the team. But I think for elite levels to be met with hell, you need to find yourself in a situation of really accepting such terms. So that is Rafinha and an Arsenal offer is on the table for for his agent, that is Deco. Barcelona Arsenal made an offer of 70 million euros in the January transfer window to get Rafinha and they turned it down. You know, so I think in the summer, Rafinha is going to be one of the highly discussed transfers from Barcelona to Arsenal. And Arsenal really like the player. He's Premier League proven and they would love to bring him back to the Premier League. Now, <clears throat> Bukayo Saka is the player that is going to face competition for competition from Rafinha. If at all Rafinha crosses from Barcelona to London, that is Arsenal. Now, Jeremy Ali Alie, if at all you watched football in the 2000s of fours, 2005, six, he was one of those players that really came in through and was very exciting to watch. French international, and he had the following to say about Bukayo Saka that at such a young age, Bukayo is incredible. It looks like he's playing. <coughs> sure about that. Looks like he's playing like a 30 year old. The way he controls it, he never rushes and he always seems to make the right decision. As a young player, normally you have to you have a lot to prove, but the way he does everything is so amazing. It's a tough one, but the way he's playing, I probably would pick Saka over Perez and Jumbag. But what Saka has been doing this season has been incredible for his age. You see Saka and you think, how does he manage to always physically keep the ball? He's not the strongest, but he uses his body so well. You have all those defenders coming at him you think he's going to lose it but he holds on it i'm so impressed with him <clears throat> he's been our best player one thing i doubt 
One of the things that I disagree with people is calling Saka the best player of Arsenal this season. I think on what on what parameters? You know, I look at uh, <clears throat> I look at Saka as a player who is being put in a level that he has not yet reached. And this is why most English players really fail to reach those high st those high levels. Do you know why? By <clears throat> praising them a lot, they find themselves in a position where their talent cannot uphold them to that level. And I think that's what Bokayo Saka is going to face. I've always told you that the cream de la cream of Arsenal, to me, those players that Arsenal, or the spine of Arsenal has the following players. Jesus, Odegaard, Zinchenko, Thomas Partey, William Saliba, and uh, <clears throat> Aaron Ramsdale. To me, that is the spine of the team of Arsenal. If I told you are having those six players with you, even if you get in Yakub Kivio to play alongside William Saliba, all, <clears throat> all Walters to play in the right back, you bring in Reis Nelson, you bring in Trossard in for Martinelli with that spine of six players. Arsenal can operate and it can win. That's it. Let Mikel try it tomorrow when Arsenal is playing in Newcastle and he benches Saka and puts in Trossard. No one will miss Saka. So I think coming out and saying that Bukayo Saka could go ahead and play, could go ahead and really play ahead of Jumbag and Robert Perez, I don't agree with that. I watched Jumbag and Perez play the game of football at Arsenal. You know? But they were really exceptional players. You know? And for Jumbag, you can call an argument, but can Saka sustain can, sus can Saka sustain the can, can Saka sustain the years Jumbag spent playing for Arsenal? You know? Can he put in performances that Robert Perez put in? Robert Perez's skill set guys is way far that of Bukayo Saka you know so I think there is what we call overhyping players like at Manchester United people talking about Marcus Rashford and I've always told people that Ganacho will come <clears throat> and overtake Rashford you know sometimes talent and hard work you know beats hard work alone Rashford is not a talented player Rashford and Saka are almost the same players they are not talented as people are really saying that's it they aren't talented but hard work has put them where they are. Now, you get Rafinha into that Arsenal side, trust me, he'll put in performances that will shock everyone and will show you how talent is far much better when combined with hard work. That's it. So, for Saka, he has had a very good season, but I don't think he's going to have to do a better job than Odegaard. To me, I believe... Odegaard, William Saliba, Aaron Ramsdale have gone ahead, even Thomas Partey in the mix have gone ahead to do a more bigger job than Bukayo Saka in that team. You know, you talk of goals. Look, Saka. Saka is having 11 assists and 13 goals. You understand? When you look at Odegaard, Odegaard is playing in one of the most vital positions on the pitch. He has gone ahead to score 14 goals and 7 assists. That is Martin Odegaard. And I think by the end of the season, Odegaard is going to have more assists and goals than Bukayo Saka. And I don't get that narrative that people are really selling that Saka is the player of the year of Arsenal. <laughs> that's, that's, that beats my understanding, guys. So... Leaving that at that, let's talk about Bernard Leno, a player that Arsenal sold to went to Fulham and they had some good closes. I'm going to hate to pay more money back to them. <clears throat> now, Ninza Kinsella has gone ahead and told us that Fulham will pay Arsenal a further £2 million pounds for Bernard Leno after securing their Premier League status for next season. After the deal, initially worth £3 million, pounds, included performance-related add-ons, Another £2 million will be due if Fulham stay up again next season on top of the further £1 million based on his Premier League appearances, potentially taking the total transfer fee to £8 million. So Arsenal is really going to get more money from Bernard Leno and 
they are really still yielding from his performances that's gonna have to really put up at Fulham then staying in the Premier League two million pounds coming in through so it shows you that this deal was constructed very well by Arsenal and it shows you how having football minded people <clears throat> helps a club like Arsenal and they're really doing some good performances. Just just on Tuesday this week, I brought you a story of how Pablo Mari completed his move to Monza after Monza found themselves staying into the Serie A. Six million pounds is going to cross hands from Arsenal, sorry, from Monza to Arsenal and they're making a profit of 5.2 million pounds because they bought this player from is it corinthians in brazil at eight hundred thousand eight hundred thousand pounds only so Arsenal have gonna have to register another huge profit coming in from that side so guys thank you very much for watching through smash the like button comment and share if you're already watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily tell me your thoughts about Arsenal submitting a new rafinha offer you know that is to deco they want to sign him in the summer what do you think about bukayo saka is he the arsenal player of the season would he really outcompete uh Sark? would he really outcompete perez robert perez and um robert perez and uh, Jumbag out of the invisible team i doubt lastly the Bernard Leno deal that is going to hate to see Arsenal yield more money from that. I cover you in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I sign out for now. See you later, my mates.